this part of the community here. I'm not looking to say that they shouldn't get letters of support when it's something that the neighborhood really supports. We're just saying carefully consider the options, what they're asking for. Now, I was in a, in a different neighborhood, and the subject came out about dancing, and someone said, oh, Captain, you know, why are you against dancing? Why are you talking against dancing? And you keep calling it a nightclub. Well, when they're looking to add dancing to an entertainment license. So you have live music, and you have dancing. Well, we internally in the police department call that a nightclub license. That's all you have to have. And it basically, it's a nightclub. Now, it doesn't say that on the entertainment license. It just says dancing by patrons, and it says there's other stuff on it. But that's, you've given them a nightclub. And had the community people say, we didn't realize that. No one's ever told us that. We thought there was something about the dance. It's nothing about the night. Well, I don't think that. If I did, I'd have to go <laughs> But it's really just it's letting a club letting a bar room turn into it's like a lounge now, what we consider a lounge and turn into police department. Letting that bar, neighborhood bar, now turn into basically a nightclub. By granting them just granting them that additional dancing on their entertainment license. By the neighborhood giving them a letter of support. And it, again when they go up before Director Malone, Patricia Malone, it's often she'll go through the file, letter of support here from the neighborhood. So somebody that that was a good idea at one point. And that, that letter can come back to one. So I don't want to scare people. I just want people to be aware that it, it isn't a valued service. Certainly the city wants to get from the residents from the board granting these. And this is really how it's done. And that's why I know you guys have subcommittees and break it down and discuss it before these things are granted. But just when one place is open later, it often causes a problem. Because that's an attractive nuisance. People from the other places that are now closed will congregate the end, hang around on the sidewalk, make a lot of noise. And when you're living in a very congested neighborhood with apartments above the restaurants, it's, a, it's not a good, good situation for a really nice noise. Just minor things on the, uh, you know, I was just going to talk a little bit about quality of life. You go to these meetings, that's what we mostly talk about, quality of life issues. Kind of over uh, a few things that we've done though, just the last couple of years, and it's all a result of people going to the not that public safety meetings, <coughs> bringing issues to our attention, and these are the some of the results. You know, in the last couple of years, we come up with a pipe down police uh, placket on the motorcycle. We come up with quiet down police placards that we were handing out in the neighborhood for the kids that were too loud. Suffolk University started the loud party car, which really started as a result of the not that public safety meetings. The overtime offices the captain had on Hanover Street through the south through the summer were a result of the meetings. The problem properties meetings at City Hall, some of the people in this room attend, the started by Sala Matina, Mike Ross, Stephen Pascantilli, people from the North End and Deacon Hill attend that meeting. All came about as a result of the um, issues that came out of these meetings and some of the other meetings up in people. Again, the captain went over the new city ordinance that is now law. We also have a loud party database. We report out every month uh, public safety meetings. We also have a database on every type of call that goes out after 12 o'clock midnight, seven days a week. We're trying to connect to find out what properties have loud parties. We want to report back out to everyone here how we address them. We get about 50 to 80 people now to not in public safety meetings, which is a wonderful thing. Kudos to everybody here that attends. It shows again that the neighborhood does here. We get a lot of media attention. We've had front page headline on the globes. We have Phil, we have Matt, and it does get back out to the community. People in other communities pay attention to what goes on down here. And if you don't think so, ask the globe because they do have globe reporters here. It seems like every other meeting I want to know what this community is doing about, you know, quality of life issues, and again, being the noise. Um, and again, the licensing board hearings, as the captain mentioned, anyone can be in attendance at those licensing board hearings very important to have people from the community who want to voice their opposition to any, you know, future uh, proposal for an extension of license or change of license, anything having to do with alcohol and entertainment. Um, and finally, just, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there, it's been mentioned in the last couple of meetings, we have had discussions on the possibility of reimbursable overtime for the bars and restaurants on Hanover Street and possibly Salem Street. Again, it's not something that we're moving forward on, 
but it has been brought to our attention by the community that we think, and we also think that the business owners on Hanover Street have to be more accountable and get more involved in this community late at night when people are spilling out onto the streets after 2 o'clock. One other thing, too, we also, Boba's Bakery did add a detail, and we're still looking at the Cafe Plante as possibly out a detail. So again, all of these things are a result of your activism um, on these quality of life issues, and we thank you for that. Okay, thank you, officers. Uh, we're going to open the floor now to uh, any comments or questions. And raise your hand and I'll follow. Uh, well, I'd just like to thank you very much because sometimes we tend to forget about cause and effect here. And, uh, you know, someone will come in and it's a local business and we've got friends in the organization. And so we do support them or other organizations might support them not thinking about the issues that are then coming before you at the public safety meetings. And we really have to think about that. Even if it's your friend or somebody that you know that is coming here, and it might be tough to say, you know, I can't support you on this, but we really have to think about cause and effect. And another issue that we have here with business owners is we have some business owners who are very generous and never ask for anything in return. We have other business owners who are generous and always want something in return. And it's very tough because they give a donation and then whoever they give the donation to has to come in and support their later hour. And it's it's very tough. I mean, in my mind, that's not really charity, that's public relations, but be that as it may, it's an issue we have in this neighborhood. So, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You made a good point. The, uh, the tougher one for neighbors, a long time neighborhood business, the tougher one to say no to. We just in another neighborhood, there's a mom and pop place looking to send their hours to work at 3 a.m. So I don't want to say the name of the place because it's a long consideration, but we weighed in on it. And they're like, well, oh, this is a mom and pop. I know the place, I, I go there myself. But they're looking to go to 3 a.m. Yeah. You know, we're going to deal with those problems, we the police. So I hate to be the bad guy, but I think they appreciated that, that she said there is another side to it. And so the very late hours, we send a place from uh, midnight to 3 a.m. It can be three additional hours. And that place becomes a destination place for everybody else. And I know it's, I know it's a nice place, but it's just, they're going to draw people. They'll be the only place open to that place. Uh, even though it's not, it's not they don't serve liquor. Just to be serving sandwiches and stuff, they're going to be driving people down to that mom and sub shop. And people will find it and go there, and they're going to have problems on that street. And neighbors will not be happy that you know the neighbors association granted them that. And I think it's tough, like you said, it's tough for the, for the neighborhood places to get to say no to, rather than some corporation coming in here, you know, from outside and try to throw something out there, late that out. People are like, no, we don't want this place. In. It's when it's a repeating, you know, from the neighborhood saying, hey, we'd like to go late. And it's not that we're trying to deny them business or anything else. It's just that we look at from the police side, we have to balance the interests of that business versus those residents. And I always say it, I put the residents first. <laughs> data on crimes that we're comparing last year and this year. But I had a question about last year. You have rape and attempted zero for the whole year, but it seems to me I remember two attempted rapes in the North End last year, and I think the police were even giving women training in self-protection. Yeah, that's that's only January. They were. There were two instances. Uh, there were two attempted sexual assaults, as we know. And we did do uh, training. We, we put out public notices on it. Those, I think, I don't have that sheet actually in front of me. I think that's comparing January of this year to just January of last year. It's got 2012 by month, zero, 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 all the way total for the year zero. My statistician sits beside me on my right hand side. Yeah, those those comparisons are, are comparing January of this year to January of last year. Just to see how we do when we compare the from, one from, one from, one from one year to another. One of the two incidents that I think oh. that you're talking about happened to be Christopher Columbus Park 
And uh, we did make an arrest on that. Uh, it was a female uh, intoxicated, a male that tried to take advantage of her, who did flee from us, and we did make an arrest on, on that. Donna Christopher Columbus body, and they were coming from another restaurant outside of the hotel. The guy who tried to just grab the girl and kiss the girl on. Uh, but no, but we, it's, it was a serious incident because it matched the description of the guy we had before. Yeah, right. I want to say it was church. Yeah. yeah, there was another one. You're, you're right. There, yeah. there was another one. This is this Tommy so mentioned. This is, this is only January. I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Hi, uh, Captain. For your Tom Schiavone, uh, for your statistics, can you comment on uh, the statistics for vandalism, altercations in the street, disorderly conduct, or I know protective custody is not a crime, but can you comment on the relationship of the, the closing of the hours, the liquor licenses? Almost all of our, those type of public order. First of all, just to explain on, on, on the crime, when we bring these sheets, this is what we report to the FBI, this is considered your actual crime rate. This doesn't have the public order offenses. Those type of ones you're mentioning are the ones that we, we do track it, certainly track it. Those ones are usually occurring after the class close, between, say, midnight and 3 a.m. That's when we see the public disorder, which is the fights that we've seen and, and some of the other uh, incidents that we've seen. Um, the protective custody, it's not a crime to be placed in protective custody, so those aren't reported as, as arrests. Yes. But it does maybe show rowdiness and noise levels uh, if people are inebriated enough to be needed to be taken into custody? Yes, it does. It, it does. Uh, we could put together, it's funny, the mayor had us do a, uh, a presentation on quality of life uh, back two months ago. He had all the captains in and he basically said, you guys do a good job with your analysis of crime and you guys are all basically crime and lower the crime rate, we greatly appreciate it. But his, what he hears from the neighborhood are these quality of life concerns. So we actually, it changed the way we do things now. We have our, our crime analysis meetings. We actually start now with going over the neighborhood maps and doing, tracking our quality of life issues. So uh, panhandling, that's, that's a large one. Yeah, say, oh, for our area, it's a, uh, North Washington Causeway. It's on the other side right there. That's where they, they gather. No, I'm glad not down in on the street, but they are, they do show up in, in our North End stats. <coughs> there. So we address those folks. In other areas of the city, that's their number one complaint. Here, ours has mainly been noise, late night noise, which we also track. And we have uh, different stats on that. We should bring those to the public safety meeting, bring some of those. Those statistics. Yes, Jim. Yeah, I know how much you love paper. Could you possibly sometime in some of our give us the data from all of 2012 and then us always comparing the month that we're in? Yes, yes. The next, the next like meeting, yeah. yeah. I, I, we, will, uh, we will bring that. Thank you. For the North Bend. But, and, and again, we'll, we'll, next time I'm going to bring the, uh, the quality of life one too. We did one, I did a presentation for <coughs> the command staff recently, uh, so I think I'll bring, uh, bring some out of that also. I know I'll get more papers for you, but I know some folks like to see. Okay. In addition to the late night establishments, major problems occur every summer and even every spring and fall and some of our times. I actually walked through the JP Park Department at night and checked all the lights in the park. We went to every park, uh, walked through the gas scene, we went down the rest of the ready front, just because we know that those are where the complaints that are coming in. We have those on our, our sheets that we give to the offices. Those are concerned, certainly. We know there's going to be public drinking back there. One of the issues that was come up with is that the state police actually, we want to play that behind our gun. That's a little bit of a jurisdiction, jurisdiction thing where we're not getting the calls they are, because it is it's state property. And I think sometimes that might not take time. But you know, some of the meetings that we've had, the monthly meetings that we have, we have had directed patrols down on Fridays <coughs> and Saturdays. If we get alerted that, Group of kids are coming from Charlestown to meet the North End kids to do that traditional thing in the summer. 
at the bridge, you know, we usually there for that. And again, that's as a result of the information received. Kudos to the people in this room who have been on the committee there that redesigned De Filippo Park. Um, you know, again, it, that redesign, it's all about quality of life. It's how do we want to design the park? You know, the low line of the shrubs, how the trees are pruned, the lighting. Uh, same thing with the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park. It's another beautiful park. Again, the result of the people in this room. That makes our job a lot easier when we pull up in the wagon of the crews and we have good sight lines. There's no endings to those parks for the most part. You don't get a lot of homeless issues as we did before at Christopher Columbus Park. The app that highlights, as we all know, some of the issues that we've had down at Christopher Columbus Park, but they are far and few between. So again, um, we appreciate you know the responses. We're on emails. You can call us at the office. But if you do see things that do not look right in the park, please give us a call. We'll get a direct control down there into those parks. I know Cobbsville Terrace became an issue over the summer also. We did make some arrests up there. Uh, but we, I mean, we did get a significant amount of complaints up there also. Yeah. <coughs> Just one issue of question. Um, I just want to last year, and it's coming up a month with St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for having me. I know I do. So it was last year, it was on a Saturday, so was, I think a Sunday this year. Yeah, it's a Sunday. And it was just insane. I haven't had a fight in the since 1987. I almost mm -hmm. fought two kids peeing on my building. So, yeah, imagine. <laughs> and so, um, I just want to, I know we have a bigger police presence down here because it's on a weekend. I think we just got yeah, I control agree. trade last year. It was insane. And, and I think it was a fairly nice weather environment. It was beautiful. We had good weather. We had the um, ruins in the day. The we had the uh, hockey at night. At night. So we had it was, a, it was a perfect storm type of thing. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I think this, uh, you know what, we, this is going to be a busy, busy one also. We have, at, at the Friday, that Friday night, I think it's March 15th, at the garden, there's going to be Dropkick Murphys. They've never played the garden. It, it, it's going to draw a lot of people. That's a rowdy group. St. Patrick's, Dropkick Murphys. We've, 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 and we've held that back for the last few years, but this year they did get the license to play down there, so we will be busy. We will be busy, but uh, we will have extra patrols on the north end, but I just want to put it out to the community now that, that that's coming. I, Hockey East this year, I was just checking with the gun, I think it's the week of the 22nd. It's the week after. It's the week after, so we won't have that exact fact. But we do have this large constant coming. It's Dropkick Murphy's. Uh, again, there could be some spillover here when that, when that breaks on that Friday. Whatever we see at St. Patrick's Day on a weekend, it's a lot busier. So what was the rate? Sunday. Sunday. Hopefully they're all in South. That'll draw a lot to South East. Plus, most people do have to get up for work on Monday, so we have that amount there. Tell me. I want to understand they take like a four-day holiday. Yeah, evacuation day falls on that night. Some people still have to go out. That's what happened to all the bars downtown. Uh, I was actually working that day and with this yeah. What happened? And it just we were trying to get resources back to the southeast, back over here. All our bars filled up real early. There was lines at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, what? I mean, I think the Saturday. Yeah, the Saturday was the issue. Was yes. The Sunday, they all had down that. Right. Yes, yeah, they all had down. Not be you know, like, uh, you know, but it was the lines were unbelievable early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they built, that kind of just built throughout the, throughout the day, and then they started coming, you know, they're walking down Hanover Street from the place to go, and then they, they, they built it. Just to let everyone know, so I'm sure you already do know, but 60% of our loud party calls are the young professional. We have a lot of people now that live in the North End in their early 20s that, in their world, they're having a great time. I think to the most people, you know, that also live in the North End, they, they really do affect the quality of life of others with their late night noise. Just a party and the loud stereos. So again, it's an educational thing for us. Our police department get up here to those apartments and have them kind of that old quiet down. Give us any ordinance violations to keep her disorderly house. But a lot of those people who are out there having a good time do venture back into this stuff. And, and really, those are the people that would try to communicate with and have them do a better job of being a good neighbor. That's why I, in March, you know, the 
the dates on it, Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll get the dates on it. Yeah. Last year, there were a lot of people here. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, yes, of course. Hi. Uh, I, I have one question related to noise that's not uh, specific to the noise ordinance or commercial venues. But, but I don't know whose jurisdiction it lies under. Uh, about two weeks ago, there was a spate of days where helicopters were just um, deployed, stationary, over the north end for about an hour in the morning, starting at around 5.30, um, which has as much of a deleterious effect as kids you know, creating a racket at 3 a.m., I think, because it pretty much woke everyone in our building up. And I'm cur I had no idea who to call. I called the harbor master. They had no idea who to call, and I just ended up on the phone to nowhere. We do have helicopters in the area. That's what you can call. The FAA and the Northern Airport. Yeah, that's like they have to be told. That's, a, that's like calling a phone that's not connected. And there's a flight ceiling too, Phil. You would know that. Yeah, we we actually have gotten complaints on those before. There is a flight ceiling that they have to maintain. Uh, so you can call 911 actually if you think the helicopter is too low, and you know the police will, will, will call it the FAA and see what the story is. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, what those ones were on that date. Mm -hmm. Positively called 911, you know, the Beacon and Lex to deal with it with the match panel, the uh, med flights. They, they get calls from the 911 at least. Uh, 911 operators can get a hold of the supervisor, and the supervisor will ascertain what's going on. That will get back to you. So 911 is a good way. Again, quality of life issue could be an emergency type thing in the air, could be a traffic issue. But they don't really want to. Yes, it could be the LNG tanker, and also, uh, how can we say this, I see, without giving a secret. Certain friends. dignitaries have, to, you know, the dignitary is a large enough dignitary. There is his support for our operations, and that could be also playing into play. Well, what was peculiar uh, about this thing was that it was an exceptionally long time. You know, which I think all of us are, are from, you know, where we just take a stride that planes to fly over and helicopters to pass for med flights and all that. But there was a helicopter literally parked in the sky for about an hour and a half, starting at around 5.30. Yeah. And it wasn't just a one-time occurrence. It just happened like a whole bunch I'll, of I'll hours. tell you, just from experience, who it usually is, and I have friends in the media, something happens in the media helicopter is just sitting up there. Okay. And that's, that's usually it. There are three years ago that drove the airport a lot to lead to track the law and a lot And of the snowstorm on the <clears throat> okay, anyone else? Uh, well, we thank you for coming and for your education. Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Oh. 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You do this all the time. <laughs> you guys just said about the issue of liquor license, how it creates a problem. Now, what we're going to look forward to now is more liquor licenses, and you have to establish before you walk out the door that liquor licenses are a big issue in this neighborhood because there are far too many for less than a one mile square radius. I want to sit right here and now in front of everybody. Uh, are we going to come up late now? What's going on? Well, no, we'll always agree with that. All right, did, I, I have to because you always leave. When you guys leave, this issue well, is this coming up, up right after meeting, you leave. Okay. About you know, we've always been opposed to any, you know, Future liquor licenses again. We've always said as a police department, there's too many liquor licenses. Far too many. Far too many in the north end. But again, we, we don't control that. But through these meetings and the north end public safety meetings, it's the community import. It's those letters that go back to traditional owners, the letters that go back to Manmanino. You know. And it really has, it's your say as a community to say, look, we, we just can't afford to have another. You know, and we've gone and opposed them, even when the neighborhood associations have put letters through, if we think it's. It, it's not in the best interest of the community. We'll even oppose it. We have a license premise. I'll tell you, I'm absolutely against, I think there should be a limit per, per neighborhood how many you can have, but that's not how the licensing is. There is actually no limit. And if licenses aren't restricted to one area, a bar, you can sell a license in Dorchester to come, to come here. It's, so, it's, in other words, let me get this straight. Nobody can get a liquor license unless somebody else is selling their liquor no, license. No. Can somebody obtain a new liquor license? Yes. This is what I have to yes. know. Yes, there's they no. They can obtain yes. a full liquor license. Yes. And they do not have to buy it from another place that is closing. They can right. just you get can a get full get liquor license. license. Regardless of how many we have in this area, which is way over the top right now. 
way over the top of this area. Charleston doesn't have it, Beacon Hill doesn't have it. All these places together probably do not add up to what we have in the not them for liquor licenses. This is why I want to state this right now. And again, so, we have a license premise issue and we've given out 43 license premises violations in the last couple of years just in the not them along. <laughs> and that we've always had this detective with the licensing board hearings so that has always been opposed to no extensions and new licenses. And again, it has to do with the quality of life in the neighborhood. And we gave out the most in the city last year. A1 did, the most violations. We, we, we do cite these places, you know, when it's brought to our attention. Just remember, we're just, we're just one piece of the puzzle. You play, you're another piece of that puzzle that has to really take part in that process and be at those licensing board hearings. And everyone has an opportunity to speak. You have an opportunity to go up to the podium and speak before the group. And, and, and the numbers speak for themselves, too. Uh, there are approximately 1,000 alcohol licenses in the city, and 100 of them are in the North End. In the city of Boston, there is one license for every 630 people on average. In Hyde Park, we know we're losing Hyde Park, don't we? Yeah, the media. There's one license for every 1,200 people. In East Boston, there's one license for every 711 people. In Charlestown, there's one license for every 661 people. In the North End, there's one license for every 112. <laughs> Six times the number of licenses by population in this neighborhood than any other neighborhood in the city as a whole. And I, I'm always correcting people on the size of this neighborhood. We're not a square mile. We're not half a square mile. We are one quarter square mile. Half a mile by half a mile, half a mile is one quarter square mile. Thank you. Okay. Well, we see that list of the, the uh, establishments that we have Yeah, we'll bring it in the next week. Yeah, it's, 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 it